Tonight, a special story you'll be talking about tomorrow. Channel 7's Bill Proctor has been researching on his own time over the past 15 years the claims of a man who has spent the last 20 years of his life in prison. And Bill joins us now with his arguments of innocence. Bill? Carolyn, the St. Clair County prosecutor presented sketchy evidence to the jury in this case. A murder, he said, was committed over a woman. But now, a highly respected jurist says the system has made a horrible mistake. My impression of it was that uh, had I been the trial judge, I would have directed a verdict for the defendant and, and uh, an, uh, of an acquittal. Not guilty for lack of evidence would have been the decision of Thomas Brennan, the former Chief Justice of the Michigan Supreme Court and one of the founders of the respected Cooley Law School in Lansing. Brennan took the time recently to read every word of the 10-volume transcript in the 1987 murder trial that sent Frederick Freeman to prison for life. Had Judge Brennan presided over that case, yeah. he would have sent Freeman home instead of to prison. It would have meant that uh, the matter was taken away from the jury and the, the decision would be made by the judge, which a judge has the power and right to do. The undisputed facts that the son of Croswell's mayor, Scott Arnold Macklem, died from a single shotgun blast in the parking lot of St. Clair Community College on the morning of November 5th, 1986, that Scott's fiancée, Crystal Merrill, had a brief stormy relationship with Freeman and testified at trial of Freeman's intimidation and violence toward her when they dated. But she had no knowledge of who killed Scott and the jury chose to ignore the testimony of some of the 19 people who insist that Freeman was hundreds of miles away in Escanaba the night before and the day of the Port Huron murder. Judge Brennan says much of the case was built on the testimony of a jailhouse snitch, small-time criminal Philip Joplin, who lied about a Freeman confession. Before he died, Joplin admitted to me his statements to the jury were fabricated. The prosecutor's office told me that when I made that statement to make sure that I turned towards the jury and looked at the jury, <laughs> But did Mr. Freeman ever say that to you? No. Did he ever say something about the victim screaming when he shot him? No. Did he ever say he used a shotgun to kill somebody? No. To spend all my time to telling anybody who would listen that I'm innocent and suddenly to come forward and say, oh, but I'll tell you that I did it, and plus I'll tell you details about it, and that was, you know, that was very shocking. I interviewed Frederick Freeman in prison more than a dozen years ago. He had by then changed his name to Temujin Kensu to reflect his Buddhist religion but he never backed away from his innocence. Action News also gave him a polygraph and the longtime Michigan State Police Examiner who gave the test said he passed it. It clearly shows me that uh, uh, Mr. Freeman uh, did not shoot Mr. Macklem. You know, they spent weeks talking about me in the papers before this happened. And uh, with it being the mayor's son in election year, I don't think anybody was willing to admit they put their foot in their mouth. Much more important defense testimony would have come from Michelle Woodworth, the young pregnant woman who was living with Freeman on the day of the murder. She too has passed a polygraph and told the examiner that she did not testify because she was frightened and intimidated by police. But she insists that she and Fred were in their home in Rock, Michigan, near Escanaba at about the moment that Scott was murdered in Port Huron. These two men, the owner and a student at an Escanaba martial arts studio, say that Freeman was with them about two hours after the murder. But 12 jurors, including this man, Richard Pellegrin, believe that it was possible, as the prosecutor theorized, that Freeman, despite having so little cash he couldn't pay his rent, somehow found the money to charter a private plane to fly in, commit the murder, and fly back north to set up his alibis. Mr. Pellegrin admits that no evidence of such a flight was ever presented in court. But they never showed you a pilot? No, sir. And they never showed you a plane? No, sir. And they never showed you how it really happened? No, sir. It was circumstantial. It was all circumstantial. We have no evidence. It was just absolutely speculative and and I think offensive to even allow that testimony without some connection to the case. So why, the experts ask, was so much presented at trial that never should have been allowed at all? Most blame the ineffective defense presented by David Dean, the court-appointed attorney who was later proved to have a serious problem with alcohol and illegal drug abuse. 
Freeman's new lawyer, longtime criminal defense counsel Richard Lustig, has filed a federal writ to get Freeman released because he too believes he is innocent. There was abuse by the prosecutor and, and maybe the defense was ineffective, but there's no way that a, a street guy, and that's what he probably was, uh, can hire a plane and get to a, a location in, uh, that's 400 miles away. But no one, not even the prosecutor in the case, Robert Cleland, can show a murder weapon, a getaway car, a pilot, a charter flight record, a plane or any physical evidence that Freeman killed Macklem. And this team of former federal agents, police detectives, and private investigators, after years of reviewing the case, believe the wrong man is in prison. This week, a clemency board in Lansing is taking a closer look at Freeman's claim of innocence because so far, no law enforcement agency has stepped forward to help in the fight to save what's left of an innocent man's life. Also this week, actually beginning tomorrow, the Metro Times provides a lot more detail in this case. If you'd like to read, it's wonderful reading. It actually will take you two weeks as the Metro Times starts this week and goes next week with more very specific details. Uh, an educator, uh, experienced reporter did this and spent a lot of time picking up a lot of detail. Now, Bill, you've been, you've been working on this story for 15 years. Do you really think he's going to get out of jail when all of this is said and done? We're certainly hoping. Uh, it's been the kind of mountain that I never expected to have to climb. I thought you'd take evidence into people. As a matter of fact, uh, that team that you saw at the end of that piece, they've been working on this hard enough to know who is responsible for this murder. They have a scenario. We have presented it to authorities. They so far have done nothing. Well, maybe you'll get some answers this week when this clemency board takes a look. Thank you. All right, thanks, Bill.